Good morning, and welcome to St. Elizabeth. Today we celebrate the solemnity of the most holy body and blood of Christ. Our presider is our pastor, Father Carroll. His intention is for the Father's Day intentions. All of the music for today can be found in your program. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good morning on a beautiful day. Happy Father's Day to all of our fathers. It's a great joy to 
here and see our choir up there this morning as we come in celebration on this feast, the most holy body and blood of Christ that defines us. Let us prepare ourselves to celebrate these six sacred mysteries by calling to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with the God the Father and the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. And being a priest of God Most High, he blessed Abram with these words. Blessed be Abram by God Most High, the creator of heaven and earth, and blessed be God Most High, who delivered your foes into your hand. Then Abram gave him a tenth of everything. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter, first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it, and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Lord, 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 Lord. Jesus spoke to the crowds about the kingdom of God and he healed those who needed to be cured. As the day was drawing to a close, the 12 approached him and said, dismiss the crowd so that they can go to the surrounding villages and farms and find lodging and provisions, for we are in a deserted place here. He said to them, give them some food yourselves. They replied, five loaves and two fish are all we have, unless we ourselves go and buy food for all these people. Now the men there numbered about 5,000. Then he said to his disciples, have them sit down in groups of about 50. They did so and made them all sit down. Then taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing over them, broke them and gave them to the disciples to set before the crowd. They all ate and were satisfied. And when the leftover fragments were picked up, they filled 12 wicker baskets. The Gospel of the Lord.
Today we come together to celebrate the Feast of the Most Holy Body and Blood of Jesus Christ, strategically placed at the end of the Easter season, the last feast before we enter into the summer in ordinary time, because it's the feast that should define us. Outside of Holy Thursday and the Triduum, we come together to celebrate and focus on that which happens at this table, what we bring to it, what happens here, and what we carry with us. And how we do that through every time, in every place, in every age, and can continue to go and to come back, continuing to be fed like the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000. I also come here today, my last weekend after 13 years. And over these years, I've heard about events in the life of this parish and its history defined by who the pastor was at the time. It sounds like this. That's when Monsignor Donahue was pastor. That's when Father Dillingham was here. I've learned, because I've heard, that's the way that you talk about your parish history. It's been defined by the decade or more that a particular pastor was here, present. What a great testament it is to this parish that we have been blessed with only seven pastors in 114 years. Seven pastors in 114 years. Previous to here, I was the 21st pastor of St. Benedict's and St. Elizabeth in Ridgely, Maryland in 105 years, and now they're on their 25th. I will become the fifth pastor of St. Elizabeth Ann Seton in 40 years. We, therefore, should be blessed. We should be grateful for the history of this parish. So what have we faced and celebrated in the last decade of the seventh pastor? I don't take us down memory lane for any of my accomplishments because they weren't. They were ours and now part of our shared journey and history. So in 13 years, we welcomed the diocese for the funerals of Bishop Saltarelli. We stood strong, resolved in our faith, families, and history for 33 days in the courtroom to play a vital role in the diocese's response to victims and clergy sexual abuse. And we were once again made stronger. We welcomed the diocese with the diocesan youth pilgrimage from the beginning in 2012. We dedicated the Benedictine Performing Arts Center in our school now known as the BPAC. We moved the tabernacle to the center of the altar. We celebrated with associate pastors, Father Giamello, Father Gabage, Father Murphy, Father Lewis, Deacon Ken through all those years. We welcomed Father Garris in retirement. We welcomed seminarians Glenn Evers, Joe McQuaid, Mitch Jasper, Michael Preston, Mark Donahue, now Brooks Jensen, and many others. Peter and Eric and Eugene and the COVID experience. We witnessed the diaconate ordinations of Deacon Ferris and Deacon Ferris and the priesthood ordination of Father Ferris. We celebrated over 100 years of Benedictine sisters in ministry in our parish. We embraced the charism of the Benedictines in their absence and have made it our own. We buried another principal, Mr. Belleville. We used the convent for young adult ministry, confirmation, adult ed, camp, day, daily mass. We restored the three bells of the bell tower after fire damage. We disassembled the organ and choir loft and rebuilt it and now enjoy its beauty and glory. We put a new roof on the church, had the ceiling repaired and painted. We lit the church up at night. We, placed, we replaced the lights in this church at least twice. We increased our parish, parish stewardship. We faced the challenges of a downsizing elementary school from two of each grade to one, but it's growing today. We have hosted the diocesan blue mass and did all that we could to support our local police, fire, and first responders. We upgraded the church sound system at least twice. We started parish service days. We had many adult ed opportunities. We moved the statue of Our Lady of Lourdes and created the grotto outside. We have, been, we have seen transition in our school leadership, and we appreciate it more who we are and what we need to be for another generation of students, this city, 
and Catholic schools. We navigated a pandemic doing our best to keep connected. We learned new technology and pretty quickly installed cameras in the system to live stream every Sunday. We hosted the 100th anniversary of the Wilmington Fire Department. We started the St. Elizabeth Devotion and did more to celebrate and talk about our pro-life saint. We started the celebration of the Feast of St. Elizabeth in 2013 with the procession. We used our resources on Cedar Street to establish one school to benefit all of its parts and fought for our students and the success of our school. We created renovated spaces in our school, the mill, the mini mill, the box, to name a few. We celebrated championship teams. We started sports masses. We tore the carpet off the poles in Grand Hall and gave it a new facelift. We celebrated Father Jasper's diaconate and Father Preston's priesthood here. We scraped decades of wax off the floor in the school and the church to reveal its natural shine. We welcomed Bishop Koenig and his ordination and installation as our 10th bishop. We moved the statue of St. John the Baptist to the sanctuary. We saw the convent come down. And we enjoy the beauty of this church in its simplicity and decorate it for the seasons. That's just some of the things that happened to us while Father Carroll was here. And we continued to welcome families for baptisms and first communions and confirmations and the sacrament of marriage. We have celebrated the lives of those who have gone before us, a generation of our grandparents, our fathers and mothers, our husbands and wives, our brothers and sisters, sons and daughters, classmates, friends, and children. A number of years ago, before I was here, a parishioner in my parish said, you know, Father, every priest has that thing they do best. I was waiting for what was coming. And she said, yours is funerals. I didn't know how to take that. But celebrating the lives of those who have gone before us has been something that I profoundly approach. Believe then that we do believe in this resurrection that Jesus Christ has given to us. I prepare for those celebrations by talking to those people. Tell me what your family needs to hear. Tell me how you want to be remembered. It is profound to think of the communion of saints that have been added to heaven and await us in these last 13 years and before. I'm trusting that there's a few people there with a little bit of influence that will remember me, and I hope you do too. Most of all, we've gathered in this place through joy and challenge and gathered at this table to be fed with the Eucharist. And I had the privilege of standing at this altar to bring Christ to you, not me, Christ, as it was before and will be after. For we humbly approach this sacrifice poured out for us in great love for all time, but not limited to our sense of time. It's perpetual. May the glimpses of love and support we have known and celebrated be evidence and a foundation of God's constant love and care for all of us through all things and in every age of this parish. My prayer is that in bringing all to this altar, whether it's celebrating Mass or coming in here late at night or walking through it on my way to or from school, and all the people and your faces and your stories and ideas and decisions and gratitude, I have followed God's will for this parish and its people and not mine. I'll leave you with some Father's Day quotes to honor our fathers and to see how we measure up to them. When you're young, you think your dad is Superman. When you grow up, you realize he's just a regular guy who wears a cape. Dads are like chocolate chip cookies. They may have chips or be totally nutty, but they are sweet and make the world a better place, especially for their children. Fatherhood is the greatest thing that could ever happen. You can't explain it until it happens. 
It's like trying to tell somebody about what water feels like on your body before you've ever gotten in it. A father carries pictures where his money used to be. A father's words are like a thermostat that sets the temperature in the house. And lastly, my father didn't tell me how to live. He lived and let me watch him do it. Thank you for calling me father. Fathers, thank you for sharing the title. May we all, wherever we are, bring all to his table. And in Christ, all become better men. Happy Father's Day. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life in the world to come. Amen. In the Eucharist, the Father nourishes his people with his beloved Son. Let us pray to our loving Father for all of our needs. That the entire world come to know Jesus in the breaking of the bread. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the power of the Eucharistic celebration inspire priests and those discerning a vocation to the priesthood to deeper prayer and reflection on the meaning of the sacrament, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our community love and revere Christ in the Eucharist and find it in it the cure for our souls, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In thankful praise for 13 years that Father Carroll has offered his life for our parish community as Christ offers himself to us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who need our prayers, especially the sick, those who care for them, those who serve our country and community, and all the intentions for which we've been asked to pray, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that they may enjoy the kingdom prepared for them, especially Judy McLaughlin, Mary Travis, Elizabeth Stevenson, and all Father's Day intentions for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Most generous Father, you provide for all our needs with the sublime gift of your Son in the sacrament of the Eucharist. Receive our prayers through him who lives and reigns forever and ever.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant your church, our Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery, and the offerings we here present through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race, bound by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the hosts of angels cry out and without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to a second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, 
upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Elizabeth and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the order of bishops, the, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you with their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For With the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that sharing your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. I forgot to conclude in my list that we watched our altar servers grow. <laughs> and all of our children, what an amazing story and journey that has been in so many ways. I want to acknowledge our seminarians that are here today. By now you should know Brooks, who's here for the whole year. And James, Jimmy Kimmel, that's actually his name. James is out at St. Elizabeth Ann Seton. And then Eric, Eric is presently in my home parish for the Summer of Holy Spirit at St. Peter's. So thank you for your presence here. As, and uh, pray for them as three men that are preparing for fatherhood. If they get that part of it right, they'll be in good shape. Okay. Well, again, I want to thank our choir for being here. Uh, I had nothing to do with these guys being here, the choir showing up. So just remember, you can do a lot of amazing things without the pastor even knowing about it. <laughs> but I know that you will have a uh, pastor who will certainly welcome your energy, your activity, and your faith. I'd like to ask everybody to be seated except for our fathers on this Father's Day. I'll include the deacon. Let us ask God's blessing upon these men in our midst. God, our Father, in your wisdom and love, you made all things. Bless these men, that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. And we ask this blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Happy Father's Day. And my, but I just want to say on behalf of all of us and the parish, thank you for 13 years. Thank you. My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth and proclaim the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And if you didn't see it coming in, there are refreshments out there in the vestibule. So hang around for a little bit. <laughs>